feature presenter is an inbound evangelist at Impulse Creative. George B. Thomas helps companies with marketing, sales, and video strategies to help grow their business. He has presented at events like Content Marketing World, Inbound, and Social Media Marketing World. One thing you may not know about George is he is currently writing a book, and today he is here to share how to use video through your company's entire funnel. Please give a warm Dream Bank welcome to George B. Thomas. Yay! Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I, I love coming to this space. This is the second time, first time at this space, but just Dream Bank in general, um, because one of the things that we don't talk about often is how through business we can actually achieve our dreams. And when I think about dreams that I had four or five years ago and um, not understanding a vehicle to use to get there, and when I think about running a business today, uh, one of the things that comes in play for me a lot is the use of video. And what's interesting is in 2015, 2016, everybody said that it's the year of video, but it didn't quite happen. Uh, in 2017, 2018, it's the year of video, and it sort of happened. Like last year, there was a huge surge of people doing video. But I think 2019 um, is going to be a really large year for video, and I want to help people realize that we're actually thinking about video completely wrong. Uh, I have to be honest with you. I'm going to be transparent and vulnerable. I, I hate my title, and I hate the title of my talk for a couple of different reasons. One... Um, it talks about tactics. Like one of the large words is 10 tactics. And here's the problem is that we think about video as a tactic or a strategy. And usually when we're talking about video, we're talking about marketing videos. We don't really dive into the world of, well, what about sales videos or what about service videos? And what's really interesting to me past that is, we don't even start to think about what we should be achieving with those videos. For instance, with service videos, we should be thinking about how are we delighting our current customers. With marketing videos, we should be thinking about how can we create some awareness. And with sales videos, we need to think about how the heck do we build trust. And when you think about those three fundamental pieces and actually apply them to the video that you're about to create, it does an amazing thing. It simplifies the goal that you're actually trying to achieve with these videos. So video is not a tactic. It's not a strategy. It's actually a way to communicate. And that's probably the, the message that I'm trying to get to most companies out there in 2019 is video is a way to communicate in the most human way possible in a digital space. You can hear and see uh, non and verbal ways of communication on video versus an audio podcast or a blog article. So let's dive into it a little bit, but we are going to talk about this topic. Now, this is a little bit about me, some places that you can find me. If you want to see me creating some video, you can go to sprockettalk.com forward slash YouTube. Uh, if you want to connect with me on Facebook, Mr. George B. Thomas, Twitter, at George B. Thomas. By the way, if I say ent anything interesting, online viewers or in person, feel free to use that. I Think it's not dead yet? No, I'm just kidding. It's not dead. Anyway, also sprockettalk.com forward slash audio is our podcast, and you can connect with me on Messenger. The reason I always put Messenger up there is I am a huge advocate of answering people's questions. So if you have questions during this session, obviously you can put them in on the online platform. Obviously, we're going to take some at the end of this session, or if it's something that you just want to reach out to me personally, you can hit that Messenger link as well. Oh, that's me, by the way. Marketing, sales, service, George B. Thomas, Impulse Creative. I don't know what I was thinking when I took that picture, but because I took that picture, I'm like, yeah, that belongs in a deck. And if you notice something in here, I do like Gas Monkey Garage, although I don't live life real fast. I'm not built for that. So one of the things when you start with video that you have to ask yourself, and I love to ask the audience when I'm talking to them, is who are you? Meaning, for the rest of this talk, you really have to embrace who you are. Are you a salesperson? Are you a service professional? Are you a marketer? Are you a C-level? Like, who are you from the point of your profession? What's interesting is we had a great conversation with some folks this morning. We talked about how our identity is usually tied into what we do. So I want you to kind of think about that for a second, but then I need you to pull back another layer of the onion and actually ask yourself, who am I? Meaning, who are you or who do you want to be to the world? 
because there's going to be some things with video that you're going to be able to intersect. Meaning I can say that I'm a marketing professional and therefore I'm going to go towards video with that in mind. But I can also say that I realize I'm a huge goofball and I love to educate people. So when I can tie my profession to who I truly want to be in the world and put them together, some magical things start to happen when it comes to video. Now, I am going to tie back to that I did say in the beginning that video is a way to communicate. One of the things that I would hope that you would also realize as we move forward today in this talk is that if you're communicating, you don't need to perform. One of the things that people will get all sorts of nervous about and start to jack up their videos is because they feel like when somebody says lights, camera, action, which by the way, nobody ever does in your business, you do not stand in front of your camera and go, lights, camera, action. You just get in front of your camera and you start to create a video. So, but there's some thought process around, well, I'm in front of a camera, I don't have to perform. I do not want you to perform, although I love to perform in front of the camera. You need to communicate. That is your sole goal, to communicate and add value to the world that could potentially be listening. That's the way that you need to look at video. All right. If after this is over, you want to dig even deeper, you can go to this URL, impulsecreative.com forward slash video. There's no zero. It's just video one. That's a typo. My fault. Sorry. Video, the number one, and that is going to take you to a course that you can check out two free modules as well as eight weeks of live sessions with live Q&A so that we can help people get past the hurdles and make video awesome in 2019. Okay, boom. So <clears throat> we're gonna talk about 10 major places that you should use video in your entire funnel or process or if you're a HubSpot user, flywheel. Anyway, any interaction that you have with people who have a problem that your solution solves, so screw the funnel, forget the flywheel, it's anybody in any of the actions that you may have customized around the process, these are going to be 10 places that you can use video. Number one is prospecting. It's really the beginning of the sales process. It's typically talked about having cold leads. And historically, you may have this amazing thing that is a mug filled with candy and a business card that you would go and drop off at a front desk so that they would get it to the person that is the decision maker and magically buy your product. This has been a huge sales tactic for years. And just so everybody knows, the candy gets eaten by the secretary, the mug gets thrown in the trash, and the business card probably props something open somewhere for some part of time and then disappears. However, with a video, you can actually achieve what you're trying to do. The gatekeeper really can't keep the video around. It's going to be personalized, so it actually feels like it's meant to go to somebody versus just getting a bulk gift. And there's some other mentalities and thoughts around this as well. So when prospecting, we're actually thinking about connecting. And instead of just connecting to sell your stuff, what we need to realize is we're trying to find a connection point. So three ways that you might do that is you find a common problem or a major problem that you know that they're trying to solve. You also might try to find a commonality. Do you like old cars? Do they like old cars? Do you like... I don't know, uh, museums, they like museums. So you start to talk about those things. It's all about connection or an event trigger. For instance, if I was going to create a video and it was going to be for Jake, I would talk about a new location for the Dream Bank and how amazing it is and how I'd love to just sit down and talk to him for five minutes about a way that our XYZ, actually I probably wouldn't even go into that. I would just say how awesome it is that he has moved and see if there's any way that I could add value to what they're trying to do in this space. Notice how I pseudo went into sales but quickly pulled back out and went into value. Because at this point I'm trying to connect problem, commonality, or event trigger. 
key piece of this, though, is it has to be personalized. It can't feel like it's a one-to-many video. It has to feel like it's a one-to-one -one video. So in this case, you're going to look for ways to use their name, maybe their job title, maybe the company name. And of course, the more information that you can personalize closer to them, the more it's going to feel like it is a human one-to-one -one type video. Custom tip on this one assign them or direct them to something. See, a lot of people will create this prospecting video and they'll end with, and so my name's Bob. Let me know if you need anything. Well, thanks, Bob. And I'm glad that I just watched this two minute video. But maybe you could tell me where there's like something I could read or something else I could watch or somebody that I should really talk to because you weren't too convincing in that last seven seconds. Assign or direct them. My friend Marcus Sheridan talks about assignment selling. Every video should assign them to a next step, to a next thing. Because the more that we can get them to read, watch, or listen, the more we start to gain trust. And the thing that we need in the prospecting stage is maximum trust. So we need them to digest more in the beginning but understand that we don't necessarily need them to digest more at the end because they already know, like, and trust us. Hey, Norm, this message is for you and you alone. Buddy, the luncheon the other day with sales professionals from Charlotte was awesome. I really enjoyed our talk. You asked me to get in touch with you so that you could learn more about our video marketing workshops and me a little bit, which that's weird, but you can click on my email signature video down there and learn all about me and what I do here at Impulse Creative. But I have added a couple links in this email. You can click on those. It's not anything too large. It's pretty easy reads. But if you have any questions, make sure you hit reply. I'm here to help. Let's get you going. Let's get your company started with video marketing. Thanks. So what did I do in this video? Name some things. And if you're online, you can hit it in the chat pane. Absolutely. Use his name in a visual way and an auditory way. What else did I do in this video? Yep. Things that you can read, the links below. And what did I say about the things that they could read? They're short, they're simple, it won't take that long. What am I doing when I say that? Mentally removing hurdles and making the life easier, exactly. Uh, you can watch the video in my what? Email signature, a video email signature. If you do not have a video email signature, meaning there's an image that looks like you can hit a play button down there that they can watch a video and learn more about you, that should be done today because it's not hard to create. It's super easy. So you can use just a static image. Or you can use something like Y stamp, or there's a plethora of like email signature uh, software. But what you'll want to do is just create a video, throw it on YouTube, probably unlisted or private, and that image, static or in a system, will point to that video. And what's interesting is when you do that, watch how many clicks it actually gets and views it gets. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit as well. So multiple ways. Use their name, personalized, um, and soft sell. Never hard sell, soft sell. It's about value, value, value. Number two, introductions. So you've got prospecting, you get past that part, you're introducing either your team or yourself at a deeper level. Uh, Around or after the first conversion point, so maybe they've made it to a landing page. Maybe this might be an in-person conversion with actually a card pass. And in this, what you're thinking about is locations of where this welcome video might be. We just talked about email signatures. So a welcome video could be in your signature. It could also be on your employee page. So, hey, there's a picture of George. There's a couple paragraphs of George. There's a couple bullet points about how George loves to be box and eat score candy bars. But is there a video that allows people to dig in deeper with ease? By the way, almost 
almost the number one reason I would say that you need to have video on every page is because almost every consumer at this point hates to read. They would much rather hit a play button, sit back, sip on a Coke or Pepsi, whichever they love most, and be fed the information. And by the way, the whole Coke Pepsi thing, you guys can fight amongst yourself about that. So about us page at a company level, employee pages for personal brands. And in this, you have really three major goals that you're trying to achieve. You're trying to humanize your brand, personal or corporate. You're trying to show your expertise why they should even be listening to you around that subject. And again, the word that you're going to hear me say over and over again is you should be building trust. The first three to four video interactions, trust, trust, trust. Because if we can get them over that hurdle, we can achieve anything. So this is a great example. This is Kim Wilcox. She's from Media Junction. And I just want you to watch this video. I think, you know, at Media Junction, we don't want to just grow to grow. We want to enjoy what we're doing. We want to make a difference. We want to help people. You kind of need that fire inside. You know, so if you've got that, then I think you're a good fit for Media Junction. So I don't know if you can hear that. It's about if you want to be a person um, kind of on fire. And really what I want to point out here is where uh, or what is this video about? Just you should be able to read the first line. Now hiring. Now hiring. So when I talked about welcome videos, where did your mind go immediately? Homepage. And would you say that that was more of a sales mentality or a marketing mentality? Sales mentality. Did anybody in this room, by a show of hands, immediately go, ooh, welcome video, that's HR. That's hiring because we're not thinking about video all the way across the funnel, all the way across the company. See, video, it, it really, in 2019 and beyond, has to become a culture. It is a communication tool for every department to use. So this is a little nugget of use it everywhere, but you could also do it like this. And by the way, thank you for the question of how do you do that. This is the email signature. This is exactly how it would look. You've got George B. Thomas, Inbound Advanced Impulse Creative. And if we can continue down, watch this video, learn more about George. Notice we've got an arrow. We've got an arrow pointing to what looks like you can click on it. And when you click on it, it actually takes you to this page that we've created. Now, we've used a, a program called 23. Uh, and that's basically one word, 23 smashed together. It's a company, and they allow you to easily create uh, video gallery resources or learning centers. And the reason that we've put the signature on there instead of YouTube is because, one, you can see that there's a little bit of a description down at the bottom. By the way, that graphic was supposed to be removed, but whatever. And we can easily get them to watch other videos that have been created by the person whose signature they're watching. Because what do we want them to do in the beginning of the process? We want them to consume more. So what should be one of the things that we're doing? Give them an easy way to consume more. It's pretty easy to go over and click on something that now captures your interest on this page. But when you click that play button over here for George B. Thomas Inbound Evangelist Impulse Creative, it looks a little something like this. Hey, thanks for clicking on that email signature and wanting to find out a little bit more about me. My name's George B. Thomas, and I'm an inbound evangelist at Impulse Creative. Now, you might be wondering, what the heck is an inbound evangelist? I get it. I get that all the time. And an inbound evangelist is a person who loves HubSpot, loves inbound marketing, and loves to evangelize how it can help change their business. You see, HubSpot is a sales, marketing, and service tool. And to say that it's large and a monster, well, that's a little bit of an understatement, which means learning how to use it can sometimes be difficult. As an inbound evangelist, I help companies like yours figure out how to get the true ROI, return on investment, for the money they're spending for HubSpot. Look, with 21 certifications to say I've been in the tool a little bit, again, a huge understatement. But what I love to do is I love to educate folks and help them be better at this thing that is content marketing, inbound marketing, social media marketing.
community and using HubSpot to do those things. A little bit of personal stuff about me. I love cruise ships. I love old cars and I love my wife and four kids. And I always love helping people like you. So hit reply in the email and we'll be talking soon. So what did I do in that video? Chips, yeah, family. What else did I do in that video, Chris? Established expertise, absolutely. And what else did I do? Like, if you have questions, do you know what to do? Hit reply in the email, right? Assign, expertise, humanize. So I'm going to pause here for a second because I actually have an entire other talk that I do, but I want to hit upon this point as we move into the rest of these. There are five major things that you're gonna hear me say or the things that I say are pushing to these five major things of why you as a person or as a company should be using video. Number one, it's a great way to humanize your brand. Corporate. Number two, it's an easy way to simplify the complex. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit when we talk about the actual point of purchase with proposals and contracts and actually having a video in front of the thought leader. Uh, it helps you disarm your potential leads, right? Everybody in a digital space has a BS radar, radar that is on point. Like we can smell, uh, anyway, a mile away. True? So we need a way that we can do that. Uh, we need to educate our consumer and then the fifth reason, and maybe the most important reason I think we should use video, is we can evoke some emotion. So those five things are kind of sprinkled in all of these tactics or pieces. So remember that, like seriously, those five, if you focus on them when you're creating the video and you intersect it with who you are professionally and who you are as a person, lights out, TKO, knockout. You're going to be amazing. Trust me. All right, number three, the follow-up. So typically the follow-up is, uh, well, it's nothing that we enjoy. A follow-up is usually several paragraphs of copy inside of our email. It's this wall that we look at and we start to twitch because we realize that we don't necessarily want to read it or it hits the cylindrical file. Something like this. And you're like, yeah, no, I'm good. So. Instead of giving them a mass amount of text, maybe you actually create an email that has one or two lines of copy and then has a video that comes along for the ride. By the way, one of the questions that I get most of the time is how would we do that? You could use a software like GoVideo. You could use a software like Soapbox by Wistia. You could use a software called Loom. There are a plethora of tools that will allow you to create a video and insert them into your email. But this would be much better to watch than that wall of text to read. Hi, Kate. My name is Jackie. I am reaching out from Impulse Creative. I know you've communicated with Remington in the past about utilizing Impulse to help you with some HubSpot services. And I see that you've recently just kind of been popping around our website looking at some um, branding guide and um, kind of what we do here at Impulse. So I'd love to talk with you more about that. Again, my name is Jackie and I do uh, business development um, at the agency. You can reach back out to me via email. If you'd like to give me a call, you can reach me at 239-208-6340. Just wanted to let you know that we're here uh, if you need anything. I hope to hear from you soon. Take care. Now for a couple of the videos, I've asked what has happened in those videos. But I'm curious to ask you the question, what wasn't this video? What happened about midway through with Jackie? Hmm, yeah, she lost her way, but she, she kept going. You see, this video got used even though it wasn't perfect. Because, because it isn't perfect, what does that make it? Real. Real. Makes it authentic. And guess what? When things are authentic, our BS meter that we talked about, it doesn't go off. We realize that there's not this shiny sales thing that I'm going through, but it's a real human being communicating with me. 
So in this strategy, we're trying to optimize the process for the person that we're talking to. We're trying to educate them because this is a follow-up. We're trying to eradicate any hurdles that they might have in the sales process moving forward. And again, assign, assign, assign them a next thing to do. The mindset, it's simple. It's actually three words that I live by when I wake up in the morning and I go to bed at night, and that is simply be happy, helpful, and human. Meaning, start with a smile, add value in that follow-up and the things that you're assigning to them, and just be authentic, be normal. Sometimes I say, AKA, don't be a douchebag, but I don't think we have a problem with the crowd that's watching this today. So next, home page. And while a welcome video is great for the home page, there are some also other mindsets that we can put around home page videos. And we need to make sure that we're making a great first impression. This is also one of the places with the home page video that I will suggest sometimes for most companies, this is majorly where you look at, well, how much of this could be or should be outsourced versus insourced. 90% of the videos that I'm showing you today are absolutely insourced videos. And some companies will be able to pull off home page videos that could be insourced, but may need to be outsourced just from a first impression perspective level, but keeping into account those five things when they're actually having somebody create them for them. But just watch this video. I probably won't play the whole thing, but we'll watch part of it. The world we live in has changed. Technology is advancing at a furious pace. Modern buyers have high expectations and short attention spans. People do everything online. Simply put, what got you here won't get you where you want to go. Your lack of a credible online presence is costing you business every day. Your sales team has completely lost control of the buyer's journey in the decision-making process. No one is answering your cold calls anymore. Trade shows aren't producing like they once did. Something has to change. You know you have to improve your digital game. So beyond, and we'll talk about these things, what was happening during that video? What was Eric doing? Well, it was his voice. Yeah, it was Eric Pratt's voice, so he did the voiceover, so he humanized it, so people who know him, know the brand, realize that he's part of it. But what was happening? He was framing an argument about you need to change your ways and essentially um, implying that's what we do. So he was yes and telling a story about a way that we may have done business historically, right? And in that light saying you might want to look at a different way to do it and suddenly selling by the way we do these things. At the end of the day though, the big thing is that he was telling a story that we could actually connect with. And I don't know about you, but when I see any type of graph that's going down and to the right, I die a little inside. So even from a visual standpoint, it's like, hmm, that's where I don't wanna be. It's actually the opposite, so how do I fix it? So it's doing a great job of storytelling. Now video types for homepage, it can be a background video, meaning you don't hear any audio, nobody's really talking, it's just a visual element. It can be what we just watched, which is a hero video, meaning it's top zone one, it's telling a story, it's building trust about the brand, it, you understand who they are, what they do, how they would fit into your life, or it can also be a helper video. And this is something that I'm challenging a lot of companies to focus on, especially with the homepage, is understanding where helper videos need to be put into place. Because a homepage job, it has one job, is simply to get people to page two. That is the whole premise of a homepage. And while buttons are awesome, videos are better especially if you use a platform like Wistia or 23 or Vidyard, that after they watch the video, you can have a call to action at the end of that video that they can click and go to that next page. 
but they're more bought into versus learn more, read more, watch more. That's the buttons, by the way. If you go and look at most home pages, we're supposed to watch, learn, or read, which sounds really exciting. Or you watch a video and it's like, now go, now dive in. And so helper videos in lower zones of the home page are super powerful, getting great click-throughs. And the idea of this story, solve, send, slash, that's another word for a sign, by the way. Send them somewhere. I just didn't want to put a sign by itself because you guys would be like, yeah, we get it, a sign. Plus it's three S's and anytime you can do that, that's cool in a presentation because you can remember, tell a story, solve a problem, send them somewhere. By the way, if you do that with your videos, and it, anyway, you get it, you get it. All right, landing pages. I'm gonna go out on a limb and tell you that every landing page should have a video. And if you would fight me on that, I would give and say, okay, don't put a video on every landing page. But to that, I would say what you do need to do is then A-B test your landing pages. And if your platform doesn't have functionality to A-B test landing pages, then use video on every landing page. If you can't A-B test, then use a photo and over 30, 60, 90 days, see if the photo converts more than the video. And if the photo converts more than the video, by all means, use the photo. But if not, then use video on every landing page. Did you know you should use video on every landing page? Not just because I say so, but because the conversion rates of video on landing pages are ridiculous. Because nobody wants to read the one paragraph and the three bullet points of the benefits or features, depending on how you wrote the copy. But they are willing to watch the video and learn more about that download, that ebook, that guide, that checklist, that video series that you're trying to get them involved in. So rethink your landing pages. In this, it's best benefits. It's super simplifying why they would want to do this. It's hopefully evoking some type of emotion because we all purchase off of emotion. By the way, the click of a button, the filling out of the form, it is a purchase mentally, even though it might not be an e-commerce purchase. We're going through the same things in our brain. Build trust, build trust, always ask, and then entire journey, and oh, by the way, did I say all landing pages? I'm pretty sure I said all landing pages. Can you give an example of the ask part? Uh, so fill out the form to the left, and we'll send you your Can ebook you immediately. Okay. Or fill out the form, hit that button, or it's just, like, because a lot of people will make a video, here's who, are, who, who we are, this is what you're looking at, here are the benefits, thanks. Roll credits. Uh -uh. No, uh, hit that chat button. Like if you're using chat or fill out that form or whatever the thing is that they need to do. All right. Okay, so, so it's no surprise business. that more and more real estate companies are using videos to showcase their homes. I mean, why wouldn't they, right? It's appealing and draws prospective clients in by showcasing how stunning their homes are. Way, but as a real estate so agent, you can have uh, all the great shots out there and the videos will have little to no impact if you don't execute them correctly. So That's showing? where Impulse Creative We're can showing. help you thrive. We give you the best of both worlds, top quality video and marketing and services combined to leave a serious impact on your prospects. We can get you all of those creative and kick-ass shots using cameras on the ground and aerial drone shots by FAA. Beautiful. So, pro tip, you can turn any page into a landing page with video CTAs. I loved this at uh, Inbound. There was a room of about, I don't know, 1,200, 1,400 people, and I said, by show of hands, how many people are using video CTAs at the end of their blog articles? Any guess how many people raised their hands? Zero. You wanna know why? Because I made this junk up. Before inbound, nobody had ever heard of it because nobody was testing it, nobody was trying it, but we did. We tested it, we tried it, we built it. We came up with the concept because we've been loving video. And so what it would look like is if you come to Impulse Creative, you see a, a title and you see a teaser video. By the way, that's another pro tip. We put a video at the top of every blog to tease it out so people will actually read it because then we can take that teaser video and use it on social posts as well to get people to the content. FYI, do that, amazing. 
Then they read it, but they get to the bottom. And this happened to be like about video hosting, if you read the title real quick while I was talking. And at the bottom you see the best video host for you. Oh, well they got another video, that's awesome. And you hit that play button. By the way, the answer to this is 23. I already mentioned it once in here. But the plethora of tools that 23 has for your video, by the way, that form in the video to be able to do this CTA and make it a landing page on the blog post, 23. But you can do it with Wistia as well and Vidyard. But anyway, the idea is what did I do for the end user by doing this? It's one of the major fives. I simplified the complex because historically they would have to click on my dumb CTA and go to my dumb landing page and fill out my dumb form and then go to my dumb thank you page to get the thing that they wanted. How many steps is that? Here they clicked a button, filled out a form and watched the content. Ninja style right here. Video CTAs at the bottom of your blog articles. Test them, see if they work for your company as well. Number six. Thank yous, thank you pages, because the journey has just begun. In this one, you wanna, again, keep it simple, keep it personal, thank them for downloading the thing that they just downloaded, or engaging with the thing that they just engaged. It's amazing to me how little we thank people in this world. Amazing, by the way, this is, this is a human teaching, not a video teaching right now. When is the last time you said thank you to multiple people in one day. Don't answer that, that's rhetorical. But thank them for doing the thing that you just asked them to do. Then, what are you doing? Assigning them. I also said direct them, because that's a different word for assigning, kind of like sending, but I didn't want to use, anyway, you get it. Talk about them, talk about the solution. It's all about them and they're almost victorious to solve the problem that they have in their sales marketing or service funnel. Chris, how do you feel right now? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Like, it's like, I, I, I wasn't even that crisp, but I still feel great. Because you see your name and you see all these wonderful things that are happening, and it makes you want to do it again. And by the way, when I said, how did it make you feel? It evoked an emotion. It made you feel something. It thanked you for being a great human on this planet. That's what we need to do with our thank you videos. Proposals, this is where it starts to get complex. We've got this crazy phenomenon, it's called the researcher, it's the bane of my existence. C-level people are so busy, they'll send out the researcher, they get all the information, and then they, they think that it's their job to actually take all the information that we gave them in the process and regurgitate it to the C-level person. And, and let's be honest, they usually jack it up. They do not do a great job of repeating the words that came out of our mouth in a way that they actually make sense. So if you use video in your proposals, now you're helping that researcher by simply giving them something like maybe a panda doc that has embedded videos that instead of them having to teach it, they can just hit play and be like, look, they gave us this proposal. It's got three videos in it. Here you go. And you do truly get FaceTime with the thought leader or the decision maker of their company via video. So simplify the complex. What we're trying to do in here is we're trying to explain what we've already explained to the researcher. We're trying to elaborate on anything that we feel they as the decision maker would need to know over the researcher. Because the researcher doesn't need to know everything. We just need to teach them enough. 
for us to become important to get this proposal to the thought leader or the decision maker and then activate, give them that place to go next to sign or to move on with the process. Again, researcher, it moves you into CEO, FaceTime, and it's simplifying that process. Whew, this is an old video. He doesn't even look like this anymore. <laughs> but you might add something like this in the video. Hi, I'm Remington with Impulse Creative. I wanted to take a second to thank you for taking the time to allow us to quote out this project. I know we've gone through quite a few meetings and we've talked about all the details about your business. And we're real excited to share this with you to talk about how we can dramatically increase the effectiveness of your marketing. If you have any questions about this proposal whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment anywhere on any one of the pages and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Look forward to working with you. So, what did he do first? Thank you. He thanked, thank you for this <clears throat> opportunity. Then what did he do? explained what they would see in the proposal. And then, what did he do? Simplify the complex, leave a comment anywhere in the document. And then what did he do? He assigned, directed, or sent them to what they were supposed to do next. It's building blocks. Like What I want you to take from this talk is that no matter what part of the process, no matter what place, from prospecting to closing a deal, there are a set of building blocks that you can put in every one of your videos to make them successful. Okay, the close. The end is only the beginning, that's what it says here. We're gonna talk about the delivery, we're gonna talk about the details, and we're going to direct them into where we want them to go. Look, there are so many times when we close a deal that the customer becomes the most uncomfortable. Because we work on all of this conversation and all of this process to capture the lead, to, to journey them down a buyer's journey. We, we spain, painstakingly create blog articles and podcast episodes and videos. And then they go, yeah, I'll sign on the line. And then they hear, like, you know, woo, 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 woo. And there's like tumbleweed that starts to roll across the, the desert. Because everybody's like back in the back room, like cheering, like on Big Brother, like, yeah, close the deal. And communication goes to like zero. So you have to have this like, they signed the contract, what happens next? Boom, let's communicate as much as we did post, as much as we did pre to this closing. That's when we start to get into the whole delight, like delighting your customers and having videos post-close and in the service part of your business, they'll stay forever. And by the way, if they stay forever, you don't have to close as many on the front end, and that's a whole different talk. So some other places that you might use it, well, actually, I think I got a video. Hey there, it's me, Jackie. Just wanted to pop by and let you know how super excited the team is to begin working with you. Before you meet all the members of our team who will be working on your project, I wanted you to meet our kick-ass project manager, Audrey. Oh, oh hey. She is the best in the business. I really am. Audrey gets to handpick everyone you'll be working with and we'll introduce you all in our first kickoff meeting. That's right, Jackie. So start thinking about a good time for you and your team to meet ours, sometime within the next two weeks. I'll be in touch soon to get everything set up. And thanks for choosing Impulse Creative. You'll be glad you did. You know what's going to happen. You know who it's going to happen with. You've seen their faces on this video. Now you're going to see their faces on meetings. You know, it's a two week period. We have other versions of this too where we show the entire team, like our inbound strategists, our marketers, anybody that's going to be on their PPC, whatever. They see these people. And you can do this in one video or you could do it in a drip. Imagine. If somebody signed a contract with you and for the first seven days that they are actually doing business with you, they got another piece of video content that told them a little bit more about the process or the next steps or the success that we're looking to gain or some way to engage them. And most companies aren't doing this. Some other ways that you might do this, if you're not doing video meetings yet, 
do video meetings. Quit looking at a phone icon. Quit allowing them to put a piece of tape over the freaking camera and get them to engage in video meetings because it all boils back to something I said earlier, the verbal and nonverbal communication that you'll be able to get out of these meetings. Total story, total rant, total tangent. I used to work with this one dude. By the way, his, norm, his name was Norm too. No, it wasn't the same Norm in the personalized video. But he would always blacken out his camera. And he would always do things during our meeting. And so one day I told him, Norm, you got to do me a favor. One, quit reading the damn newspaper right now. Two, take the tape off your camera because I need to see you from this point moving forward. I only said that in that manner because the week previous on the training that we did, I had to ask Norm to quit eating a bowl of cereal on our training. <laughs> Do video meetings. You can keep them accountable. They can keep you accountable. They can see that you're smiling. They can see that you're passionate. It makes for a better meeting. This one, entire funnel, as much as needed, verbal, nonverbal, attention, engagement. Bonus, if you can, be funny or try to be funny. It's up to you. I like to be funny. Or I think I'm funny, which and therefore I am funny. Anyway, I digress. Ten, some of you may be using chat, some of you may not be using chat, but when you think about using chat, you may want to think about using video inside of your chat. This could be everything from quote unquote pseudo video like GIFs or GIFs, depending on which side of the room you land on that. It's, it's GIFs, thank you. Anyway, but video in there as well, again, it's taking something that, by the way, conversational marketing is trying to personalize or humanize the process on your website, adding that video element into it will help use YouTube, short narrative, manual video. Um, Vidyard has a great integration with Drift right now to be able to use those videos in your chatbots. Uh, again, on-site chatbot, you're thinking intro to the brand, you're thinking personalized, tease out the resources. So they might say, hey, I'm looking for a blog article on XYZ. Instead of immediately sending them a dry link, you might send them that teaser video that we just talked about having at the top of the blog and after they watch that video, then knowing to have that link. Are you, does that look interesting to you? Yes. If yes, deliver link. Make sense? Again, humanize that process. What's next? ImpulseCreative.com forward slash VFM or ImpulseCreative.com forward slash video one if you want to get into the course. Focus on these five things as you move forward. Simplify the complex, humanize your brand, disarm your leads, educate your consumer, and evoke some emotion, and you will rock it out with video. Thank you. My name is George B. Thomas. I'm not here all week.